Hi friends. I have some supplies here. Some coloring cards. A notebook with some Tamoy River paper. A dip, a steel dip pen. A paintbrush. A glass dip pen. Hmm. Hmm. That's cause it's time for ink flight. Heck yes! Oh, I'm so excited. Um, we got all sorts of paper here. And I'm gonna use this page for more swatches. All sorts of swatches. We'll try and use the back of that paper. So, um, <laughs> this came late-ish. I feel like the lighting isn't particularly good, and I'm sorry. I have, like, several lamps here, and I don't, whatever. Okay, so let's close our eyes. My eyes are closed. You can't tell. I'm taking on faith. Pull everything out, and then we have our inks. We've got what? Have you ever asked for a hippopotamus for Christmas? How about an inktopotamus? Oh my goodness. Now I have that song in my head. Thanks a lot, Ink Flight. And then we have these Waringle Smile Cat ink swatch cards. Catalog your ink swatches with these grinning Smile Cat swatch cards. Each pack includes 50 sheets of 200 GSM impression paper with an epoxy coating that will show the cat's smile when you brush over the surface with fountain pen ink. Oh, that's delightful. This, I, I, this kind of thing I really just want to use on bottles of ink that I have, though. So, I have an idea for the end. Maybe. Or maybe you'll see this in a different future video. But this is pretty cool, and I like the little case they're in. Um, what is, I mean, of course, what kind of makes me sad, it's unavoidable. But you can see where the, like in the grazing light, you can see the reflection of where it is. So I kind of wish somehow it was magically hidden from me. Oh, you know what? If I do it without my glasses on, I probably won't see where it is. <laughs> oh, this thing's cool. So this is an endless uh, creative block tear-off notepad. So this is like a tear-off. Oh, the, the side got a little munged. That's all right. So this is the um, Mergalia paper in here which is uh, the paper I'm using in my low-key transcription project. So you can, I, I don't know if these are glued along just the top or whatever, but it's a desk pad and you can write, 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 and then uh, it's cool. I actually used to have a big, a big thing that was the size of a mouse pad that was a calendar, a paper calendar that you could tear off, which was, um, was it weekly? It was pretty dope. I loved it. So perhaps I like this. But now, after all, this is ink flight. I'm here for the inks. And we have here, oh, I got to get my, ooh, it's a brand I've never used, friends. How exciting. So we have here, Ferris Wheel Press. Super stoked. These labels are coming off, and they need some of the labels that the Dormouse's desk has. So, let's get our ink up. And we'll take a look here. So, through artful storytelling, Ferris Wheel Press reintroduces new generations of creative people to the romance of fountain pens and stationery. 
fall in love with writing while mating while using these gorgeous inks made in Canada. So we have the Velvet Ballet. Well, this says Sparkle. Uh, Spruce County Post, which I think uh, Amanda really liked. Could be wrong. Uh, pumpkin Patch. Sounds orangey. We know those are always my favorite. <clears throat> Uh, Little Robinia. I feel like that might also be a Amanda favorite. This is, uh, Peter Moss. Edward Edwards Gardens. And Stroke of Midnight. It's sad that these weren't like last month's because I actually just bought a new tool and I wanted to like buy more things to get free shipping. <laughs> One of the things they sold was Ferris wheel press ink, but I was like, oh, I've never, I'm not going to buy a bottle. I've only had tried them before. <laughs> so, man, that color is beautiful. Glad I bought it. Um, Cool, 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 cool. So we have our, I gotta get these away from where my left hand goes. My left hand is my working. Uh, you know, it's gotta be free to write, to drop things, to not drop things. So we start over here, we have a little card, put it in front of us. This one here, our sparkle in it. Shimmery shimmer, so we'll give it a little so this is Velvet Ballet or the Velvet Ballet. It says Merlot ink mixed with metallic sparkle. This color has a warm and glamorous appeal. Just like me. <laughs> I kid. I might be warm, but I am not glamorous. <laughs> Wow, wow, weird things are happening. There was something wrong with my pen. This, hmm, I'm not sure how, ac how accurate I feel like is calling this Merlot. What was it when I started writing this in lowercase? I always write them in all in small caps. Maybe the next one. This to me is rusty. Let's shake it up. And I don't see much shimmer in the writing, but for one, I kind of feel like, you know, when you're getting a, a smaller sample of ink, the shimmer, right? I tend to think it's not indicative of, of what a bottle will be like. So we're doing little, this color is like brown, friends. Like a warm brown. I think we just raided someone. Our 
and interesting. Uh, and next, Spruce Candy Post. Celebrate the finer things with this calming and earthly, excuse me, earthy spruce tree green ink color. I felt like one too many words there. I had a moment just then where I thought I wrote a really awful word instead of county. <laughs> uh, that would have been funny. <laughs> just I mean, that's funny without me having done it. Um Okay. The number of swatches I'm doing like just keeps increasing. Because I have more paper just shoved in this little notebook. But it's fine. Most of them are optional. I mean, I suppose all of them are optional because I do what I want, you know? I run with gangs. Just kidding. Um, this is a really pretty green. It's a very Christmassy green. And I don't mean that in a dismissive way. Though I am dismissing this to a different place to dry. Next up, <laughs> we have Pumpkin Patch. That's right. This bold orange ink evokes autumn's splendor. Does it? You know what invokes autumn's splendor? Gray skies that never go away. Migraines. This is clearly my favorite season. <laughs> it tells how you really feel, Maria. This is a beautiful orange. It looks like it probably has really nice shading. What are we writing? Uh oh. Like, um, ugh, my water is a horrible color. Well, I suppose it's just gray. <laughs> Which is funny because gray is my favorite, but it's a warm gray. Mm -mm. Nope. Cool grays for me, please. What is that, man? I hear some kind of low flying plane out there. Or, uh, Maybe. Let me know if you hear that. Okay. 
Ooh, interesting. This ink looks pretty different colors on a different paper, I think. I don't like it. So the color that I think it might actually go down when you write with it, judging by the glass dip pen, is much lighter. And it is a very pumpkin-y orange to me, like the, f the flesh of the pumpkin, and I don't like that at all. But we'll see. I like the, the brightness or the deepness of the steel pen. Um, look, Marie, what do you think? You're playing with ink. Think these things happen. It's fine. Next up is Little Robinia. This soft lilac ink shades with a blue undertone. I am here for you. Well, it's a cool gray, so we know what I think about it. Well, it says soft lilac. I'm going to call it a cool gray because you can't stop me. Um, forward to these to using them in pens this feels like a really unlubricated ink I think most extreme shaders like this are have that quality. I feel like there are a lot of colors like this now. Sometimes inks can suffer from, you know, you've experienced something like it, but from someone else. And even if it was the first, and I don't know whether it is, it suffers because you're like, oh, I've seen that. Um, Peter Moss. This says, released in fall 2021, this olive green ink has a hint of black sheen. Ooh, exciting. I got another, I had another box in my front door when I went to pick this up and I was like, whoa, because I just ordered makeup and skincare and I had hoped it was one of those orders. But it was something uh, that I, it was like a gift sent to me. I was like, oh, how, how funky. Um, it's lovely. How nice. So this is. Peter. Moss. Why Peter? Is Peter Moss a person? Is Peter Moss like a type of moss? Is Peter an adjective? Is it describing the kind of moss it is? If you know, let me know. I had a 
good day today. I am almost finished with a dress that I'm making for myself and it's highly impractical and yet I love it. I feel like it fits me well and I look great in it. Generally speaking though, I, I have found that if clothing fits me well, I generally It's like it was made for me. <laughs> um, I describe this as olive green. Oh, sorry, my stomach is talking to me. It doesn't agree, I guess, or maybe it wants olives. I am not yet seeing any black sheen. We'll let, we'll see if it comes out on the other papers. And I think some people will call this a khaki green. This has shimmer, I think. Edward's Garden, a scintillating teal with gold sparkling flakes and a mystical hint of red sheen. This is how it gets on my fingers. Don't leave enough space. We got there. We got there. I'm, I, am I most exciting for, most exciting? Most excited for the last one? Maybe. Why are gardens teal? Any ink deserve to be green. It's probably something I just don't understand. <laughs> mm, yeah, little Verbinia is pretty. What is it reminding me of? A hot mess? Beautiful. I hope I didn't just get ink all over myself. But say l'encre. Did this have something to do with Twilight, maybe? Is he one of the characters from that? I don't know that. I feel like maybe I remember reading it. It is, it's, it's, that's my jam. That color is, yep. And we have Stroke of Midnight. Ooh, look at that. Stroke of Midnight, ring in the new year with this shimmering opalescent midnight blue ink. It seems like it's probably saturated given how it's coating the inside of the vial. Let's endeavor to not get that on my hands. I thought that was 
is going to be a problem. Not in a pink. Stroke of Midnight. I don't like this one in the dip pen. Well, maybe I don't like what I've done with it. this way it doesn't matter so I think wow some fun stuff happening on this other paper Ooh, dipped that too much. Cool. Is that you aside to dry? Gotta be good about cleaning this up. I have I temporarily removed all of my sewing things. And I think you wanna see those cat cards, right? Okay, I got an ink that I have been e very eager to get into a pen. It is one of my newest bottles, and appropriately, it's wearing wool ink. So this is a shimmer ink. I'm gonna put it in my Twisby. Go, go, go. I'm not gonna fill it too much, because again, I really love changing all my inks, and you know. So we'll give another quick shake, shake, shake. And then we're going to test this out. Well, there's some creepy things happening. It's trying. It's trying. Might be working. Maybe don't like pile on the ink like your life depends on it. Hey, 
Hey, check that out. This is delightful. This is delightful. This pen is like w overly juicy. I'm gonna have to like suck up a more ink around this nib, I think, yeah. Because otherwise it tends to, to spit. It's funny because people call it burping, but burping doesn't usually like expectorate. So. so that's my Twisby Go. It has a broad nib. I think all on my hands. And look at these delightful cards. That's great and kind of creepy, but mostly great. Oh, delightful. Delightful. So I think when I uh, ink up from my bottles, I'm probably going to go through and use these. Because like, oh my gosh. Delightful. <laughs> So all, um, so this was a pretty dope, uh, ink fight. Um, I really enjoyed it. There's some inks here that I'm very excited for. So we'll recap what we got and then I'll show all the swatches. So we got a hippopotamus, inked, inked, inktopotamus, inktopotamus, taking a bath in a bottle of ink. We got seven samples of lovely Ferris Wheel Press inks. We got ink on our desk. We got, oh, these cards, obviously. We got this cool um, endless uh, notepad with the Virgalia paper in it. Um, my experience with this paper, by the way, is that your line width looks, um, wider, similar to the way Cosmo Air paper reacts. If you've tried it, are you also finding that? Or is that just in my head? Um, so that's pretty exciting. That's a lovely group of items and I'm super thrilled with all of them. Just, oh. y'all, I can't get over it. Okay, now, enough mucking about. Let's, com let's look at the samples. I'm not going to do any comparisons because I don't feel like it. But... Let's go. So here is Velvet Ballet, Spruce County Post, Pumpkin Patch, Little Robinia, or Robinia, Peter Moss, Edwards Gardens, and Stroke of Midnight. So we got uh, three inks that are shimmer this one is looking more merlot in once it's dried um this reminds me of from cali by Colorverse. This reminds me slightly of this ink wayfarer. But I mean, let's be real. This is actually probably a lot like Emerald of Shavor, right? It's got a red or rusty colored sheen. It's got gold shimmer and it's a dark deal. Um, the Stroke of Midnight is pretty lovely. It's very festive. Now, let's look at them on different papers. So, this is the Aeroful paper. And I didn't do them in like the same order. Well, I did them in this order.
So these are mostly the same. This one is bluer on the Irofu. This one is also like darker overall. It could have been a heavier swatch. The under, the, the colors in Little Rubinius split a little bit more. So you see more of the pink and the blue separately here. Um, Stroke of Midnight was definitely a lighter swatch. Lovely. And then we have, let's pull this big old, can we get this, this notebook over here. Tomoe River. I'm just covering up ones from a different time. So these are mostly the same, right? Um, I, I, I think this one looks warmer. The um, Peter Moss looks warmer on the Tamora River. The Edward Gardens, the sheen looks pinker. No, that's probably just the same. It's probably just I'm a dork. And now the one that's like, I'm surprised. This is the Midori MD Cotton. Holy cow, look at that one. <sighs> Crazy. So check out how different the colors are on the page. It just went on the floor. Like, holy cow. Look at them all. They're, they look great on this paper, but they are just, like, different colors of ink. Like, this is... Yeah. So the, the Edwards Gardens um, looks greener on here compared to here. Same with the um, Peter Moss. I mean, I guess in general, it looks greener on here. And I think that's pretty fascinating because this is a, a more cream colored paper. And you'd think that it would amplify any green. Um, I do like how crinkly this is. So I'm excited. All of these are nice. Um, let me pick my favorite. I don't know if I usually do that. I probably don't. I mean, Edward's Gardens is like the basic favorite for me because it looks like inks that I have bought bottles of. So I kind of don't want to include that. And of the rest, I think if I was going to buy a bottle, it would probably be Spruce County Post because I don't really have anything else like it. And I think it's a nice color. But I don't feel the need to buy any of these. I suppose that's a very good thing because I'm content with my um, collection as it exists now, which is good because I have too many inks. So <laughs> um, this was... Ink Flight for December 2022. Can you believe it's December? Holy cow. Holy cow. I've been thinking a lot about how this year has been. And maybe the best part is making these videos and kind of getting to know some of y'all through your lovely comments and the conversations that we have. So once again, I really appreciate you watching these and saying things and even if you don't say things etc etc um i do still have some other pin videos coming out this m month that are kind of like retrospectives over the year and maybe some uh 10 besties and 10 worsties we'll see um and whenever you're watching this i hope you're having a wonderful day Please take care of yourself. Bye.